how you choose which direction you're gonna go. Because when I said have that combo platter, so let's, let's put liens aside, because we've already dealt with those, but let's talk about those next steps. So let's talk about attorney, collection agency versus small claims and how to choose knowing what's right for you. And I told you to keep your options open. So you're gonna to wanna to look at how much money is at stake, how complicated is the situation? Is it pretty straightforward? Are there lots of nuances? If you're a contractor, was there a lot of problems on the job that it's going to take somebody to be able to explain it? It's not very cut and dry. So you're gonna to wanna to look at what those are. Do you have any other leverage? Do you have a UCC, Uniform Commercial Code filing? Is there anything else that goes with that? Again, you're looking at how complex this is gonna be. If it's pretty clean, then yeah, I'd send it to a collection agency. I usually have recommend that you have a cutoff. Like if it's under X number of dollars, we're gonna send it to a collection agency. If it's over X number of dollars, we're gonna send it to the attorney. If you're taking over a, an AR for some, that somebody else was managing and you're not sure how things went, as you're going through it, you may decide, hey, these are all over 180 days or some of them are five years old and they're still sitting on here. Let's go ahead and move them to a collection agency because I don't really know what's happening here, but I'm not just willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's make sure that we've, we've picked up all those rocks and made sure that, that we didn't leave money on the table. If you're using a collection agency, that's something you're gonna to need to interview them as well. Somebody that works in your space. So you want a collection agency that understands your industry, probably does a lot of work in your industry, so if you make a good relationship with them, they're gonna be able to give you some inside data. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of, say, a lot of um, collections come in through this particular region of the company, or yeah, this guy is struggling, we've had a little bit of pushback on it. So you, you can get a little bit of information there as well. You wanna find somebody who works with your style and whatever that communication is. If you want a lot of verbal, and they're not able to give you that, that's a problem. If you like something that's sent to you through a portal that you can log into and see that real-time action, that's you wanna go with, with somebody who's gonna be able to give you that as well. If it's, hey, I want this on an Excel spreadsheet and I want it every two weeks, you wanna be able to have that communication. I'm very much a hands-on credit manager. My recommendation for you is that if you're going to survive in this industry, you've got to be too. It's not that I don't trust anybody, I wanna be able to see it. So if a collection agency tells me, just calendar it for 60 days, then we'll get back to you. No, no, you won't. We won't work together very long. That doesn't work for me. I want real time and I know what it takes to get something through the court. So if you're just robo calling and we're not making any progress, that's not working. So you wanna ask a lot of specific questions while you're interviewing, um, those collection agencies to pick someone. Again, reach out to your, your credit network, find out who other people are using, go online, look some, some folks up, and don't be afraid to interview them. If you've got a mechanics lien on there, it's $100,000, there's some complications to it, you're gonna wanna move that to an attorney because there's a lot of nuances there and it's a lot of money. If it's something that, hey, it's $7,000 and it's pretty cut and dry clean, the guy's just a deadbeat and a liar, then maybe you do wanna send that over to a collection agency. A lot of it goes back to your risk reward philosophy as a company. I've had company presidents and CFOs that are sue them, lean them, kill them, eat them. They will spend a ton of money on an attorney to sue someone for $2,000. And then I've worked for some presidents that are like, don't spend any money if you don't have to. Can you possibly fly there and take them to small claims court yourself? Again, you have to, it goes back to what we've been talking about through all of the lessons, communication and relationships. It's knowing your company, knowing the personalities and the people and the philosophy that you're working for, how you're helping shape it and develop it, and then how you're executing it. So you've got to keep that communication going. So when we're talking about a collection agency, we're talking about who specializes in your industry, do they listen? You're trying to cultivate a good partner, and that goes for attorneys as well but you're gonna to have to decide what the cutoff point that you wanna send somewhere to. If you get the opportunity to do small claims court or to send your credit people, if you're in charge of a team, to small claims court, it's invaluable. It is such good opportunity for them to learn and for you to learn. You'll understand the process much better. 
you'll be able to walk through it and there's nothing like being able to, to have that experience behind you. With attorney-driven litigation, that's a whole other ball game. And depending on how complicated it gets, depending on what, what are you taking back? Was your company selling equipment, trucks, the supplies? Was it um, just services? What all is involved with that? If I have to repo something, that's a whole nother level. So you wanna also have an attorney that understands your industry and that is a good communicator. You don't want someone talking down to you or making you feel stupid because you don't understand their language. Explain to me, I'm a reasonable person, explain to me what we're talking about. So when we talk about, hey, we're going to serve judgment on them or we're going to repo this, tell me what that repo process looks like. Because it's not like the TV show where they go and hook up a car and you, know, you can't drag off an insulation truck because somebody didn't pay their bill. There are steps that you have to take through that. And you want an attorney that's gonna walk you through the process. So when we're talking about hiring somebody, that communication piece really does come in. Again, you want somebody who is going to share some philosophies with you that you're gonna talk through. It's, hey, this is a dead file. I don't care if we ever do business with this guy again. He was so awful, I'm never gonna let him in there. Unfortunately for me, I've learned the hard way and I'm, I'm gonna try to help you avoid learning the hard way. Working with attorneys, what you're looking for, get into that community piece on level set Put in, especially if you're regional or you're looking for someone specific. You know, years ago, I would have loved to have had this tool because I had to search everybody out myself. And it was a very painstaking process. And eventually I came up with a system, but it took a lot of work and effort. This makes it so easy to get out there onto that community, look up different attorneys, see who jibes with, with your philosophies, and throw some questions out there and see what comes back. And you may be surprised at what comes back from your peers as well. So don't underestimate, you know, the, the power of what you have in that tool is really good. And I would have loved to have had it, the time that it would have saved me had I not had to construct it myself. This is just a small taste of a much larger class. You can take the full class for free at levelset.com. Join me.